Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out on the Switch in this upcoming week. A big thank you to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video. Now we've had a couple of good weeks in recent times in terms of games coming to the Switch, although last week was quite poor in comparison, but I'm delighted to say that this week looks absolutely fantastic with the potential to be up there with some of the best single weeks we've had on the Switch this year. So with that said, there's nothing else to say, let's jump straight in and see what's coming. Another big thank you to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video and this week sees the arrival of their game Empire of Sin. Highly anticipated since its trailer was shown in Nintendo's 2019 E3 Direct, Empire of Sin sees you building a ruthless 1920s criminal empire, outsmarting, outgunning and outlasting your opponents in Prohibition era Chicago. A character driven game with tactical based combat, strategic empire management and high replayability, you will need to assemble a gang choosing from one of 14 unique bosses to play as in the infamous Prohibition era, defending your turf and expanding your empire in turn based combat. And all the while you will be building your empire of sin, running Chicago's underworld economy by strategically managing your establishments such as speakeasies, supply chains and casinos to name a few. You will find a link in both the description and the top in comment where you can pre-order the game but also find a host of information such as profiles on all of the bosses, diary entries from the devs and a series of videos called the Chicago Chronicles where the devs stream the game giving helpful hints and showcasing the core gameplay. Be sure to check that link out and prepare to build your own Empire of Sin on the 1st of December. You know that no one ever really wins. I'm coming for her in a game. And if you're looking for salvation, come and get it. You know you ain't gonna find it in Mon chéri. the Empire of Sin. And next we have Sam and Max Save the World Remastered. This game first came out in 2006 and was actually from Telltale. They themselves of course went on to make a host of fantastic point and click games after this and are sadly no longer about. If you've never played Sam and Max before, Sam is a detective dog and Max is a rabbit I guess. This is a remaster of their first season of episodic games and has been updated by some of the original developers with the blessing of the original creator. It has updated graphics, some new music added, Joy-Con and touchscreen support. It's going to sell for £15.29 and comes out on the 2nd of December. I may have accidentally chewed through our brake lines. Good to have you back, little buddy. What are we waiting for? Also releasing on the 2nd we have Shira and the Wanderer, The Tower of Fortune and Dice of Fate. This game came out on the Vita a while ago now and is a roguelike, I don't know, dungeon crawler I suppose you'd call it, it's actually a spin-off of the mystery dungeon games. You will need to lead Shirin and his sidekick Copper in their quest to conquer the Tower of Fortune. Each dungeon you enter is full of traps and danger and you'll need to strategize in order to get through them in one piece. This new version includes three new bonus dungeons, a music collection where you can play the tracks from the series history, and also has what's called a live display mode which optimizes the game for streaming, which is quite interesting. It sells for £17.99 and as I said it comes out on a second. ...that change each time you enter. This trio of bonus dungeons will challenge even the most experienced wanderer. There are no weapon drops in the bladeless wasteland. Rely on items and ranged attacks to fight foes. And then on the third we have a big one, one that I'm sure many people have been waiting quite a while for now. This is Immortals Phoenix Rising, originally known as Gods and Monsters and coming via Ubisoft. This is an open world third person action adventure game where you will play as Phoenix as you go on a quest to save the Greek gods from a dark curse, taking on a host of mythological beasts and mastering legendary powers of the gods before trying to defeat Typhon, the deadliest titan in Greek mythology. Beasts included that you'll need to fight include Cyclops, Medusa and the Minotaur and you will be using aerial and melee combat as well as combining those gifts and abilities given to you by the gods that I mentioned earlier. Now I love Greek mythology, I love everything about it and due to this, this is a game that I've been looking forward to like many others I'm sure ever since it was announced, I think it was at E3 2019. As always we'll have to see how it looks and plays on the Switch but if they do get this right this could be up there for me with things like Breath of the Wild.
Then we have Morbid the Seven Acolytes. This is, it says, a horror punk ARPG filled with Lovecraftian horror and Cronenbergian gore. It goes on to say it makes it the most gruesome take on the isometric Souls-like genre yet. You will need to face challenging foes, mini bosses, and it says memorable large scale boss fights. And to overcome these obstacles, you must master the combat, as well as improving your character through a wealth of elements such as quests, perks, runes, upgrades, and looting. Now it's crazy, isn't it? Because some weeks this would be the pick of the games, but in this week with so many other good games coming, it probably gets pushed down the pecking order. But having said that, I'm a huge fan of Lovecraft and Cronenberg as it happens, and some of the screenshots on the eShop look wonderful in a macabre and gruesome kind of way. This is selling for £19.99 and it comes out on the 3rd. Next up is Liberated Enhanced Edition. This game includes a story that pays homage to iconic dystopian novels and movies. I must say it definitely reminds me in some respects of graphic novel V for Vendetta. Quite interestingly though, this one is actually set within a comic book and has the hand-drawn art style to match it. You need to fuel the fires of a cyberpunk revolution. Just watch out not to paper cut your fingers, it says as you go. This game is actually already on the Switch, as I said, this is an enhanced edition, and if you do own that original version, you can download this one by looks of it for free. It has two new epilogue chapters, For the Homeland and Glory to the Heroes. It's selling for £17.99, the same price as the original, but does have 20% off up until the 10th of December, and seems to have scored very well first time round. Then we have Nine Witches Family Disruption. This is from Blowfish Studios. Now, I'll be honest, when I watched the trailer for this, I didn't have a clue what the game was about still after watching it, but fair play, the trailer did its job because I definitely wanted to know more. It looks like it's a point and click game and really reminds me of Thimbleweed Park, albeit it's nothing to do with that game, but in terms of the graphics and just the humor that I saw in the trailer, it definitely has that vibe to it. It takes place in a small Norwegian town during World War II and sees you playing as a quadriplegic professor who is an expert of the occult, as well as having your faithful assistant along for the ride. It definitely has that Monkey Island or as I said, Thimbleweed Park look and feel to it and the humor as well. And although I'm not a huge point and click fan, actually this one's definitely got my attention. It's selling for £15.99 and it comes out on the 4th. Since then, a mysterious dark moon hangs over the sky generating uncertainty among its inhabitants. <laughs> Meanwhile, in London... Next up is John Wick Hex, which is a fast-paced, action-oriented strategy game which will make you think and strike like John Wick from the classic film franchise. It says this has been created in cooperation with the teams behind the films and describes itself, quite interestingly, as fight choreographed chess brought to life in a video game. You must make quick decisions knowing any action or attack you make will have immediate consequences. This tells an original story set prior to the events of the films and also includes the voice acting talent of Ian McShane and Lance Reddick, as well as Troy Baker who takes on the role of the villain Hex. So use them wisely. By managing time, the game puts players in the strategic mind of John Wick to pull off impressive feats. But to play like John Wick, you must think like John Wick. And then from Nintendo we have Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. This is the first in the Fire Emblem series, releasing in Japan on the Famicom in 1990. This is the first time this game has been localized and released in Europe, and it has that classic tactical gameplay that Fire Emblem is known for, where you'll need to lead your units on a map, being careful not to lose a unit, because if they're gone, they're gone forever. Now having said that, this release does include some quality of life features, such as a quick save, a quick load, and a rewind feature if you are finding it all a bit too difficult. I've been a fan of Fire Emblem since I bought the Sacred Stones for the Game Boy Advance, and I was very happy to see Awakening release and add those quality of life features, albeit I don't use them myself, which have made the series more accessible, and let's be honest, kept it alive. It was on its last legs at that point. This is selling for £5.39 and is only actually available until the end of March next year. Yeah. 
Another Nintendo release straight after that we have Fitness Boxing 2 Rhythm and Exercise. This is going to sell for £39.99, comes out on the 4th and also has a demo that you can download and try now. The blurb is actually very vague in terms of what's been added for this second outing and just says select any one of nine instructors including three new ones and that you can customise your instructor's outfit. I would hope there's been a bit more added than just that. That being said I do own the first game, my wife bought it after she had our son and it is actually a good workout, it's a good game. Although we bought that for £20 physically, £40 is quite a big ask. Save data also carries over from the previous game, so use all these features to help keep you going. Select any one of the nine instructors, including three new ones. Janice. Hero. And the final game for the week then, we have Commandos 2 HD Remaster. Commandos 2 Men of Courage came out back in 2001 and is a real-time tactics game set in World War II. This remaster has reworked controls, a modernized user interface and an overhauled tutorial. You can rotate the environment a full 360 degrees now and move in and out of buildings seamlessly. You can control 9 unique commandos, each with different skills and specialisations, and take part in 10 missions spanning across 9 different environments, all with day and night and realistic weather effects. It's selling for £26.99, although you can get 10% off of that price up until launch, and it comes out on the 4th. I know Mark is really looking forward to this one, he was a huge fan of commandos back in the day. So there you have it, in my opinion the best week of releases we've had in a good while. Which of those if any interest you, please do let us know in the comments section, are you going to get any of them? Stick your thoughts down below. Another big thank you to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video, please do check out the link for their game Empire of Sin in the top in comment or the description, looks fantastic. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care, stay safe and until next time, happy gaming.